Hi guys, so uh, we're back onto the cube blending stuff. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, made a few little changes offline. Um, I added a, a separate block coordinate, so that it now renders two blocks, so we can start working on uh, drawing between those. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, modified the, the block geometry slightly, so it's a little bit more complex. Um, it's still made up out of the same, the corners, the edge, and the face. Uh, <coughs> I also added a, uh, a shader for it, so that it puts like a metal panel effect on it. This is a triplanar shader. I'll stick a, a link on the screen, um, and that's based off of. Uh, let me grab this. That's based off of the triplanar mapping um, uh, <coughs> wiki page on ShaderForge. Uh, I used uh, this one here, so object space projection. So it uses the X, Y, and Z of the object space, and uh, if I rotate the block, you'll be able to see that it, ro that it rotates the texture with the block rather than using world space. So that's what we're going to use for pretty much all of the textures. At the moment, it just does diffuse color and has a, a default um, specular. If I just open up the thing, so you can change the base color to modify what colour you want your spaceship to be. Actually I quite like let's go for a slightly blue colour. There we go. Um, <coughs> we've got the uh, the texture, the diffuse texture which uh, is just a, a a metal panel texture that I uh, I, I put together in Photoshop and uh, make sure it wraps around. Uh, as you can see it, it does kind of wrap around the, the shape pretty nicely. Quite happy with that. Um, eventually, what I'd want to do is have the um, the the texture that it uses to be based on, say, the vertex color. Uh, so that way, you can have multiple different ver uh, different triplanar textures on any one block. Um, I have had a bit of trouble exporting the um, uh, the vertex color from Lightwave. Uh, I need to look in on that. Uh, but anyway, what we're at now is we have uh, these. You can see if I pull over the, the console, we've got uh, 1300 vertices and almost 2000 triangles, which is a lot uh, considering it's just a couple of cubes. Uh, so the reason that that is is because it's it's rendering each of the, of the triangles on the model as like a separate thing with separate vertices. So what we need to do now is go through and uh, add in uh, a way of basically merging these together into uh, one mesh with shared vertices. And the way I'm going to go about doing that is um, <coughs> if I pop open the code, what we could do is in the, the block mesh um, we could add that in here uh, but what that would uh, mean is that if I wanted to use this anywhere else uh, we wouldn't be able to. So it would actually make a lot more sense to extend the mesh class. So in here, I, uh, you see my project, I've got MISC tools. And these are all of the little things, like extensions and uh, changes that I've made to Lightwave. Um, so what I will do is we'll create a new class in here uh, called Mesh Extension. And we'll use uh, what is quite a powerful um, part of uh, the .NET languages, uh, which is extension methods, which allows you to attach your own methods and functions to somebody else's object. So I don't, I mean I could go and decompile the mesh class and add it right in, uh, but I don't need to. What I need to do is just add in a little bit extra functionality on top of the uh, Unity mesh so that we can de like basically decimate the mesh and remove any uh, duplicate vertices and triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go fast forward now, I'm going to go put that in, play around a bit. I'm still uh, not 100% sure the best way of doing that um, <coughs> as, as, as far as the algorithm goes. So I'll do that in fast forward mode. And uh, and then when we come back in a minute, we'll um, go through that and I'll, I'll sort of explain what I've done and how it works. Okay, so thanks for thanks for joining us again for this. This is uh, part two of the, of the block mesh videos. Um, we're gonna go fast forward now, I'll find some sort of chilled out music to put on the thing, so enjoy and uh, I'll see you in a couple of minutes with a bit of explanation of how it works. Cool. Thanks for watching guys. See you in a sec.
Okay, uh, just a very quick uh, gotcha that I just learned about. Um, when you set mesh vertices, it checks Unity checks it against mesh triangles, and if mesh triangles has not already been set to the right number, it then throws an error. Uh, but what it also does is it then cannot work out like which facing direction a normal direction all of the triangles are. So what happens is if uh, if I do it this way, so I'm setting the triangles first, and then I'm setting the vertices, what we get. is our mesh, right? So that's correct. If what I do instead is set the vertices first, right, and then I run that, what we get is a total mess. Whoop, there we go. And you also get this vertices too small because what it's doing is it's actually doing some calculations in the background based on the number of things in the triangle array and because the triangle array is big or it's, the triangle array is the same size but the indexes within it are different they're, they're referencing uh, a list of vertices that have 51 vertices instead of 21 so that's what's causing my, my issue here uh, I've been, spent about an hour banging my head against this thinking that my, my maths was wrong um, uh, but it's not, it's it's just the order in which you have to do the operations on the, the mesh itself. So that's an interesting got you. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, switch back to fast forward, I just want to put that in there because that really, really tripped me up and uh, it's a good one to know. Um, and then I will do fast forward, put in, uh, undo all of my debugging and fiddling stuff and then we'll have a look at the end result. Okay, so here we go. We've got the uh, the results here. Now, I'm now sitting on the fence about this because when you merge the vertexes, it also merges the normals. So you get like a smooth shade, which we might want, but I'm not 100% sure about. Um, it leads to little artifacts like this corner here. Um, yeah, so I need to I need to rethink about this. So what we've now got is we've now got approximately um, we've halved the number. Well, yeah, we've we've just over halved the number of triangles. Um, so that is that. Uh, so I went through a load of different uh, different ideas of this, but we'll just go. What I ended up with was fairly simple. So, what we're doing is we're we've I've created a public static class mesh extension. Uh, this has to be static. I've put it in my miscellaneous tools folder. Uh, I am using link. Actually, I'm not anymore, but I was using link to do some of the calculations. So I can remove that now. Oh no. Sorry, I take it back. I do need link because I need this to list function for vertices, just for making things simpler. So I'm creating some lists of vectors and lists of ints. So old vertices is equal to the original ones. New vertices is an empty list of string uh, of vector threes. Old triangles is equal to the the mesh triangles, and new triangles is equal to the uh, is a new empty list. So the first thing we're doing is we're going through all of the vertices in the old vertices. And if the new vertices array doesn't contain the same one, then we're adding it. And what that's doing is it's basically taking all of the duplicate ones in old vertices and only creating one instance of them in new vertices. Now, what I have actually done is passed in this float distance, because what I want to do is, uh, sim I might want to use this to actually simplify meshes. So if I put in a high distance, it will merge uh, merge things that are much closer together. So that has simplified our vertices array. Uh, so new vertices is now a much smaller array which contains unique values uh, from old verts. There's no duplicates. So then what we're doing is we're going through the old triangles. 
uh, and the way I'm doing this is I'm using a for loop because the triangles are made up of three items I'm going through uh, three things at a time and then I am adding a new uh, new index which is based on the index of the old one so what we're doing is this oh, the old tri uh, the old vertices old triangles index right that is getting us the old bets of three from up here in these and then what we're doing is we're using index of to get the index of the new unique one and then we're passing that into new triangles and so what this does is it builds up a new array of triangles that contains references to the new vertic vertices indexes not the old vertices index um, then what I'm doing is I'm just doing some debug output to just say how much it's reduced it by uh, I am then apl applying uh, new triangles to the mesh triangles and as I said in the, the thing a second ago that's important uh, I didn't realize how important that was but I um, the way that Unity deals with everything that needs to be first uh, and then I'm applying the vertices second so that it doesn't uh, get upset uh, I'm then recalculating the normals and recalculating the bounds um, this basically just uh, if I comment this out oops, what you'll see is it will use the original normals from the original mesh that we pass in as the uh, the model and it won't be able to calculate the lighting correctly so it's not calculating the lighting it's not able to calculate the texture itself correctly because it doesn't know what the normal is so it just assumes the normal is like vector uh, vector three forward on the model so what that requires the recalculate normals the recalculate bounds um, I'm not 100% sure whether I, I need to do this or not. Uh, if I'm using this as a collision mesh, um, I would probably want to do that because it will then recalculate this collision mesh to be around all of these. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. I'm, I'm now on the fence about whether I want to actually take this approach because uh, the, although it's creating a lot more geometry, uh, sorry, although it's reducing the amount of geometry that it has to render, uh, it's actually quite slow to begin with. Um, as you can see, it takes a, a few seconds to load up. What I'll do is I'll stick some timing in there so I can at least work out exactly how long it takes to, to do it per triangle. Which means that this might be uh, not any, uh, nowhere near efficient enough to, to run regularly. Uh, we do lose the the nice sharp crisp edges uh, and on that I'm I'm sort of not sure whether I, I want that or not uh, so that's where we're at um, I'm glad I did this I've learned a bit about the, the meshes and everything it's it's maybe not quite the result I want uh, and I might need to do a few more tweaks to either go completely smooth on this and then start adding in detail with uh, ambient occlusion or uh, go for sharp edges. I, I, I do quite like the, the rounded edges in some cases. This, the, on the flat faces here, this obviously doesn't look quite right. Um, and uh, there'll be normal maps applied to this shader so you'll get like the, 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 the panel specularity and everything will all look, um, look much better. Uh, so that's that's video number two. In uh, the third video, what we're going to do is start looking at getting the faces merged between uh, between meshes. So we're looking at, uh, between blocks. So we're going to start looking at the adjacency. Uh, for example, the bottom block here is adjacent to this one and this one, but also that one. So we want to look at the not only like the north, south, east, west, left and right sort of directions, we also want to look at the diagonal adjacency and what will happen here is it will duplicate this face and these edges here and here uh, and because there's a diagonal um, it will also want to delete, uh, duplicate this middle face in here and what we'll end up with is a narrow cube that has an entire face here and the same for all the others 
So that's going to be the next video. I will probably do a little bit more mucking around with the, the shader and uh, try to optimize the decimation or the reduced polygons uh, a bit more because obviously this is, uh, it's, it's slow, it's not quite perfect. Um, it might be nice to actually do that in a thread or a, a code routine in the background so that it's not hanging, hanging the entire game, uh, the game loop. Uh, yeah, but thank you very much for watching. A uh, little bit disappointed, but it's, it is what it is. I've learned a lot from it, which I guess is the whole point. Anyway, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, uh, have a good weekend. Enjoy.